Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Zebu Nation's Let's Play of Battletech, a brand new game released in 2018 by the developer Hairbrain Schemes. This is a game that was kickstarted. I was one of the backers, very happy to be playing this game. And for this episode, I'm rebranding it the first episode of the series. And the reason I'm doing that is because everything that happened before this was prologue. Of course, the old saying, the past is prologue, and that is very true in this game. It was just tutorials and story missions and character setup and all that kind of stuff. Now we finally get to the game itself, the proper game of what this version of Battletech is. Now, there's been plenty of versions of Battletech throughout the years, going all the way back to the 80s in the tabletop board game, and then the Mech Warrior series and all of that stuff. But what this game does is it combines all of that. It's got elements of all the past games, going all the way back to the board games, the Mech Warrior games. Everything is sort of encapsulated in this new game, in this new play style. And I don't know if this is going to be a new category, but I'm going to call it a new category. This is an XCOM-like, because like pretty much the only game that, that really seems to have a ton of influences on this, other than its own properties, you know, the only game outside of its own sphere of influence would be the popular strategy game XCOM. And the reason why I call it an XCOM-like is because it has so many similar elements to that game. Maybe XCOM didn't invent it, maybe it did, but anyway, what this game encompasses is a grand strategy game where you have uh, resources and characters and units and armies and all these sorts of things that you have to manage on a strategy layer and you're following a narrative much like in XCOM. So it's not just an open-ended strategy game. There are elements of that. You can choose your path, and you can go astray and follow little missions and do whatever you want, but at the end of the day, you still come back to a story mission, and that's where the XCOM-like really makes a difference from other strategy games. Most other strategy games, you just play until you win or lose, and, and that's it. You don't necessarily follow a story-based narrative the way you do here in this game. That's what all the setup in the previous episode was all about. So anyway, the other part of this game is the turn-based tactical layer. And that's where you take a few units, you control them in a turn-based tactical combat scenario where you just try to win that one scenario... Try to keep your units alive because your units can die. There are permadeath. Again, another XCOM uh, relationship. But anyway, you try to win that tactical layer. And one by one, the tactical layer, each battle you win, helps you move forward on the strategy layer. And so that's pretty much a rundown of the game. We're going to get into more of the details here, but that's just a brief overview. If you missed the previous previous episodes, the story is that our character, Zebu Nation, of course, grew up in the outer rim where we were part of a small noble house. Our house went bankrupt and we were left to fend for ourselves where we went. We went out and took our last remaining family battle mech. And we joined another noble house's army, the Arano family. And it was there that we rejoined our teacher, our mentor, Raju Mastiff. And we were there for several years. We became one of their uh, soldiers and one of their mech warriors. And during the little preamble that we played, myself and Raju, we were escorting the new leader of House Arano to her coronation where we were ambushed by her uncle, so there's all kinds of intrigue and plots, and that's definitely part of the Battletech universe. You know, there are so many different families and houses all vying for dominance in the Battletech universe, and now we're engaged in that. We're part of that struggle because now we need to seek revenge against um, the uncle of House Arano. I'm forgetting his name right now so our revenge isn't really at the forefront 
of our mind. But anyway, what happened at the end of that scenario was we were picked up by a mercenary party. And they said, hey, come join us. We know you're a fighter. We were kind of loyal to House Serrano as well. But we're mercenaries, so we're getting out of here. Why don't you come with us? So now it is three years later, and they've elected Zebu Nation captain of this mercenary unit. So now we're in control of the mercenary unit, and we can start building this organization up. You know, we have to get the funds because we're a mercenary unit. There's nobody bankrolling us. So if we want to keep going and keep fighting and maybe one day get our revenge, we have to first become a successful mercenary. So that's what we're going to try to do here. This is our ship, a Leopard-class drop ship. It's not a very big ship in uh, terms of Battletech universe, but it's good enough. Let's take a little look at it. So basically... On this screen, what you have is your overview. This is like the uh, the geoscope in XCOM. This is where you can see, you know, your monthly finances, what day it is, what week it is, what month it is, all that stuff. And you have a clock here, and you can spin the clock forward again, like in XCOM. And you have your timeline here, and things happen. You can see 26 days. Zebu is currently out of action. We had a little mission. Um, right at the end of the last episode, we came into a new episode where we had a mission. And so we got a little bit of injuries and stuff like that. We got to work on that. We have a financial report at the end of every month. So that's the, that's the doomsday clock of this game is you have to have a positive financial report at the end of the month. You can't ever go negative or your, uh, corporation goes bankrupt and you lose the game the bank will uh, seize your assets and you'll be out of luck so this is the main hall you can uh, or the main screen you can if you're on a planet or in a planetary system you can go to the store and you can buy equipment that you need weapons mechs you can also sell your loot from your previous adventures so it's very important. And each system is different. Some systems are richer. Some systems are poorer. Some systems have better technology. So you got to sort of manage your way around the map and figure out who's who and what's what. Then if you're low on pilots, which we currently are, you can, uh, you can hire a pilot. Now, I'm thinking about hiring a pilot, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's go down. So that was the command center. Hey, Commander. Pull up a chair. This is one of your dudes, Darius Oliveira. He's sort of your second in command. So you can you, you can actually click on him and talk to him and stuff like that and learn more about him and get his opinions on things. So it's got that little bit of a role-playing element to it. Then you can look at the barracks here, and you can see your mech warriors, your various pilots. And as you can see here, we currently have two pilots down for the count. Decker and Zebu are out. Um, each pilot has different skills that you can upgrade. You can see here with the experience points. We have 2,600 experience points right now. So that's a lot. So we can level up a lot of our skills. So 900, we can get uh, more tactics. That helps us in firing missiles. We can get more gunnery. That helps us in firing direct fire weapons. We got 800 points left, so we can't get any more guts. Guts are like, uh your health and your ability to resist damage and things like that. And then piloting. This is your skill in melee combat and other sorts of just moving your mech around. So there we go. We have upgraded three of our abilities. Outstanding. Yep. Medusa. Here's one of our pilots, Mohamed Benitez. He has 2,100 experience points, so we can level him up. He seems to be a guy who's a pilot. Uh, in terms of that's his specialty. Each each pilot will have somewhat of a specialty and uh, something that they're better at than other things. Uh, Muhammad uh, seems to be fairly balanced at the moment. We can look at his service record. You can see, uh, you know, where he's from, what he's good at. He's a technician. He's he was in the military. He's very cautious as a as a warrior. He's from the periphery, just like we are. So he's a local local fella. So let's see. 
Medusa right now, we can't upgrade his piloting anymore, but I think we'll give him some guts and some gunnery. We'll make him one of our one of our gunners. Training complete. Glitch. She's already a gunner. She's already has five gunnery. She's got a special skill of multi-targeting, so that's good. She can also fire missiles pretty well, but she's pretty low in piloting right now. So we're going to upgrade her piloting, leave her a little bit of XP left, and then Behemoth, a defender. So you can see she's got five guts already. She's tough to kill. She has the Bulwark skill, which uh, you gain guarded uh, when you remain stationary. So usually you have to click on guarded and make that your entire turn where your guy will basically go into a defensive stance. But Behemoth, she does that naturally. All she has to do is stand still. That's what makes her a defender. That's her specialization. Got 800 skill points. Right now, we can upgrade her tactics. That will help her fire missiles a little bit better. At least eventually. Next, next time, it'll help her fire missiles a little bit mech better. Warriors. So we're just trying to keep all of our mech warriors a little bit balanced. Even though they'll eventually have specialties, we want to make sure they're at least proficient in... You know, driving their mech. So there we go. Back to that. So that was the barracks. Then, of course, the big thing you've got, your number one thing you have to keep track of is your mech bay. And this is your mech engineer, your chief mech tech, Yang Vertanen. And again, you can talk to him about stuff. If you don't, if you have a question about something in the mech bay, like how does this work or how does that work, you can ask questions of him. You can get his opinions on things like your other characters. I'll be here if you need anything. But for now, we, we know all this. So we're going to look at the mech bay itself. And here are your mechs. The Leopard class has a mech bay with six pods in it. So you can hold six mechs at a time. And any mech that you can't hold in one of the mech bay components here, you have to put it in storage. We don't have any in storage right now. But uh, let's see. Do we have any components? We have some weapon components. Large lasers, medium lasers, all kinds of stuff. But we don't have any mech components right now. So once you get mech components, you can actually build your own mechs. But for now, it's too early in the game. We haven't gotten that far. But what we do have from our last mission is a couple of injuries. So we've got five mechs in our bay. The Blackjack, that's our, our family Blackjack that we brought with us from the story mission. We've got a Vindicator, which is sort of an energy-based... I guess it's a medium mech. It's 45 tons. It's right on the edge of being a light or medium mech. And we've got a Shadowhawk. This is one of our larger mech, 55 tons. It's still classified as a medium mech, but this is more of a all-around versatile maybe even long range you could specialize the shadow hawk in long range if you wanted uh, and then we have a spider which is a small mech it's very maneuverable it's kind of a scout mech and then we have a locust which is an out and out scout you don't really want to fight with this thing at all you just want to run around and, and you know scout people so here's our shadow hawk we got a lot of damage so you can click on two buttons here. You get the repair and refit. You can, if you're not missing any components or any modules, you can just hit repair, and it'll tell you how much it'll cost. It'll cut you 6,000 C-bills, which is 6,000 credits or 6,000 space bucks, whatever, to repair it in three days. So the mech is going to be down for three days. And then the spider... Spider took a lot of damage. Both his legs were smashed up. His center torso was smashed up. Not destroyed, but smashed up. We can check the refit, see if we lost any equipment. We lost a leg, the left leg. We got to replace the left leg. But we didn't lose any components. If you lost, like, let's say the center torso got smashed so bad that I lost a couple of lasers, those lasers would be down here. And then I would have to go into my equipment and I would have to replace those lasers with some other components that I had available. And if I didn't have any components available, I could go to the store and buy some more. You can also find them as loot. But for now, we're just going to go up here and click repair. All. Well, I guess before I do that, we'll look at these symbols. These symbols will tell you if anything's wrong with your mech if you can't tell from the big repair buttons. 
it'll tell you that uh, this mech has one or more locations that are destroyed, which is our left leg, and it has one or more locations that are damaged. So we shall repair all. So that tells you it's been modified. I like to click the max armor button just to make sure that the uh, the mech techs will you know increase the armor up to full. So there we go, and then you get a little report. It's going to cost 47,000, so much more damage to the spider. And we will confirm that. So it's going to drop our funds down to 926,000. So there we go. There's uh, the mech bay. We'll continue to look at this as the game progresses. Navigation. This is our other important crew member. This is Sumri. How can I be of service? Uh, Sumire Meyer is what I meant to say. Sumri? Why did I say Sumri? I don't know. Anyway, Sumire Meyer. She is our navigator, our pilot of the ship, not a mech pilot. She's a spaceship pilot. But anyway, again, you can talk to her and stuff like that, but we don't necessarily need to at this moment. The other thing that's here that's interesting is the star map. So if you want to fly around, you want to go to different systems, this is it. This is the star map. And it's huge. It is it is a mega star map. I can't zoom out. I haven't figured out how to zoom out. I'm using a Steam controller, which I like to do for every game that I play. But sometimes there are little quirks, and I can't figure it out. So anyway, here we are in Leopard. And you can see um, a rundown of the system here. It shows you how challenging the system's here. There's a little brief uh, blurb on what the system is all about it's a frozen wasteland you know the planet that we're on is Ur-Kareen Ur-Kruin whatever it's a frozen wasteland so we're probably going to get out of here but anyway it's a poor mining system there's a primitive civilization small population so there's not a lot of resources here not a lot of stuff that we we need now we do have a system nearby Bellerophon which, as you can see here, we have a contract. There's a contract available for us in Bellerophon. We'll look at that in a minute. But we can click on Bellerophon, and we can see what this is all about. Um, it's a recently liberated from mercenaries and religious fanatics. Lightly inhabited, Bellerophon is an arid and inhospitable, and conflicts over limited agricultural resources are common. So there's a lot of fighting there, which could be good for a mercenary company. Travel costs would be 30,000 credits. It takes 12 days to get there. Um, there's a battlefield there. There are ruins. There's agriculture. Periphery level civilization. So slightly better civilization there. Small population. Arid world. So there's a little bit more stuff there. But it doesn't say anything like rich or research or industry or anything like that. Because that's those are the call signs you have to look for to see if a system is going to have cool stuff for you. Like, if it's rich, it's going to have good-paying contracts. If there's industry there, there might be mechs available for sale. If there's technology there, it might have better class of equipment than what you can find on the battlefield or buy in some of these other systems. So this is a, you know, a good way to just sort of look around the galaxy. And right now, this is as far as we can go. So as you can see, travel is not possible restricted until the debt is paid that was another part of the story missions is that our mercenary company is in debt to a bank and the bank is right now controlling our um, movement and they're not going to let us out of this little cluster of stars until we pay them back so that's sort of our initial goal here in the game is to make money and pay back our debts then finally you have the captain's quarters this is where you're at you can uh, check out your finances in a little bit more detail see your operating costs we're spending 130,000 in personnel costs and 114,000 or no that's 130,000 in uh, operating costs so there's our bank loan interest 70,000 that's our biggest investment right now is the bank loan so that's no good and then our Mechs all take an upgrade co or upkeep cost, so that's that. And then the salaries for our pilots. We only have four pilots making twenty-eight or twenty-nine thousand. 
So there we go. We're spending a total of 244000 a month. So we got about three months operating funds if we don't spend any money, which is, uh, you know, okay, but not great. Then you can look at your reputation. This is the reputation of your mercenary company. So there's something called the Mercenary Review Board, and that's what gets you your contracts. We're rated as a 15, which is pretty low. It goes all the way up to uh, 1,000, I think, or 500 or something. It goes more than 200. I know that. Anyway, and these are the different houses. These are the big major players in the galaxy. The Draconis Combine, uh, the Lyrian Commonwealth, and House Steiner, the Tori the Torian, Concordat, interesting, the Free Worlds League, and if you're familiar with any Battletech lore or universe, or there are books, you know, novelizations of the Battletech universe, you might not be aware, but there's a huge deep history to Battletech, and all of this stuff is meaningful to people who know that history. I know a little bit, a tiny fraction of it, whatever was you know, with some of the various board games and video games. I haven't read any of the novels or anything like that, so I'm not a scholar by any means, but a lot of this stuff is familiar to me from past experience. And then finally, you can customize the company. You know, right now we're named Zebu's Marauders, which is fine by me. We could change that, but I don't think so. I'd like to change our logo to the uh, Mercenary logo. I like that. Then I think I want to change our colors a little bit, too. How about red is good. How about we go red, white, and blue? Should we do that? Accent is blue. We go r red, blue, and white, maybe? Hmm. No, maybe not. How about blue, red, and white? Hmm. Yeah, I think I like the red on top. Oops. There we go. All American colors. Let's go. All right, so that's a basic rundown now we got a little bit of time before some stuff happens um we've got three days 11 days until our spiders are ready and stuff but anyway let's take a contract here are the contracts in the command center we got one contract available to us aggressive intrusion for 179,000 it gives us salvage 10 total salvage but we get to choose two pieces off the battlefield so this is kind of important we'll keep an eye on that we'll talk about it in a minute so anyway here's the mission we have to travel to Bellerophon which we looked at it'll take 12 days which is fine um, our intelligence confirms a lance of pirate military units is engaged in maneuvers on Bellerophon within a region that we control this is aggressive action and local government operations are at risk as long as the lance is allowed to move unimpeded. Hunt down the enemy lance and eliminate it. So this is the, the planetary government, the local government. It's not one of the big houses. It's just a little local government asking for help. Um, and then you can get advice from your second-in-command, Darius, here. He says, this is a straightforward battle. Finding a military lance in a backwater like this should be no challenge at all. So as far as he's concerned, this is an easy contract. So let's negotiate the deal. So you saw here that you set max pay 179000 max salvage 2 and 10, and max reputation plus 8. Which is fine, but when you actually sit down to negotiate the contract, you can see it's much less. It's only for 97000 and one out of six salary, and this is where, and zero reputation. So this is where the negotiations come in, and whether a, you know, a system likes you or doesn't like you will affect the negotiations and the type of contract they offer you. So you got these sliders here, and you can slide them up and down. Of course, more money equals less salvage. And vice versa, less money equals more salvage. Um, right now we need more money than salvage. But the other thing that you can do 
is you could take a little well no not with the small okay so with the small governments it's only money or salvage no reputation but if this was a house what you could do is actually you could take less salvage and less money and that would raise the reputation bonus that you get for doing the mission. So that if, there's, if there's a particular house that you want to raise your reputation with, you can do missions for them a little cheaper, and they'll like you a little better. So that's how that goes. But for now, uh, we want to keep our money flowing. So we're only going to take four salvage. We're going to get 138,000 credits, sea bills, sea bucks, space bucks, and we're going to start the mission. So now we have to travel. So you can see the days of the week going by. Our spider is just about to be fixed. So we have to take our drop ships to these jump ships because it's jump ships that have warp capability and can jump from one system to another. So this is what costs the money when you're traveling is you have to rent these jump ships. And there we go. The jump ship is taking us next door. It's only one jump, so it shouldn't be a big problem. And there we go. 12 days <clears throat> in the books here. And as you go, you get these little mini missions. Shakedown. You're on the Leopard's Bridge with Sumire, Yang, and Darius for the daily staff briefing. Darius says, we received the three messages from the banks. Loan sharks, Samir cuts in. Anyway, from the people who are financing us, Darius continues, they're considering rewriting the terms of our loan so that it will be easier to seize the ship if we miss a payment. As usual, they're only doing this because they believe we can't fight it in court. So you got some options here. This is sort of RPG-like. You can try to sweet-talk the bank. You can ignore the message. Or you can educate the banks about their mistakes. So this is sort of the tough guy role, this is sort of the passive role. I think we'll go with the sweet talk. We'll try to, you know, we're not in any position right now to be tough guys with the bank. So we'll just sweet talk them. And there we go. Your company gained the following tags. Loan status fair. I'll talk to them, you say. The meeting moves on. Afterward, you record a response. In it, you explained with much gravitas that you, that you selected each of the banks for their prestige and reliability. You remind them of your impeccable payment history. You conclude by expressing your desire for a long and fruitful financial relationship with them, hinting that you might seek additional loans when your current ones are up and paid in full. A few days later, the banks contact you and say their previous messages were sent in error and, you, and should be ignored. So there we go. We got a little positive outcome there. Good job. Good job. Now we're going to hit the play button and continue our travels, get to the system. You can see we got a new store, new hiring hall. Okay, work queue is empty. So there we go. We got one day to Bellerophon. Let's go. So there we are. We're going to orbit the planet. Um, we've arrived at Bellerophon Commander, ready to proceed with our current contract. No, not yet, because we got an issue. Our two pilots are out for 14 days. Our mechs, however, are ready to go. We got five mechs all ready to go. But we've only got three pilots. So the question is, do we want to hire another pi pilot, have another mouth to feed? Or uh, do we want to wait 14 days to, for these guys? Now, the frugal thing to do would be to wait for 14 days for these guys to get healthy. But eventually we're going to have six mechs, so I'd like to have six pilots. So let's go ahead to the hiring store. And let's see if we can find ourselves a pilot. So we got Buckshot here is the best pilot available, but um, this mech warrior can't be hired because your company's mercenary re review board rating is too low. So he's a really good pilot, but he's too good for us, basically. So we got our choices here. This is not a great system for pilots. How about Scars? Um, mech review board rating too low for this guy, too. So these pilots are not very good at all. Um, 
We got a salvage here with three guts. Raspberry with three tactical. What is this guy's name? Gentor? Genitor? Don't like that. Anyway, he's got three tactical as well. But then we got Cloak here. Three piloting, four tactical. Standing by. So he's a Steiner commoner. He's from the Illyrian Commonwealth. He's an independent trader. Um, 22,000 base salary a month is pretty low. So we can use him as just sort of our tactical guy and he can run around and it's fine. We'll hire, we'll hire Cloak. Maybe someday we'll find Dagger and uh, we can hire her too. But anyway, in the meantime, we're going to go back and launch the contract with it. We're going to take our brand new Mech Warrior out into the field. So here is where you choose your team. You can only have four mechs, even though we've got five available. So we're going to bring our best mechs, Shadowhawk, Vindicator, um, of course, the Blackjack, and then I guess our next best mech is the Spider. Spider is 30 tons. It's got two medium lasers, a zillion jump jets. Eight jump jets, so it can fly around the world and back. And then we got the Locust, who's only a 20-ton mech, so it's tiny. It's barely, it's smaller than some tanks out there. All it has is one medium laser, two machine guns. It's very fast, no jump jets. So the Spider is definitely the choice right there. Okay, so, what are we going to do? All right, so Glitch is our best gunner. So which Vindicator? See, Shadowhawk needs tactics. Yeah, yeah, Blackjack. Blackjack is all about the guns. So since Medusa has four gun, four gunnery, only three tactics, so she, he's, he's not very good at missiles, we'll put him in the blackjack. Glitch is our best pilot currently, yes. Best gunner anyway. I think we'll put her, her <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to take a drink of tea clear my throat all right I think we'll put glitch in the vindicator because the vindicator has that that PPC cannon particle projector cannon it does a lot of damage I think we want her in there even though she's got well no behemoth only has three tactics as well so we'll put glitch in the shadowhawk because shadowhawk has missiles Put uh, Behemoth in the Vindicator. And then we'll put New Guy Cloak in the Spider and see if he can live through the battle. Two gunnery, two guts. You know, he can run around and he can be our scout, essentially. So let's go. Let's deploy for the mission. And hopefully most of our episodes will be around 30 minutes. It'll take the length of a mission, hopefully. If we can get our missions down to 30 minutes, that would be good. But we'll see. Here we go. Prepping for combat. So destroy the pirate lance. That's all we got to do. Intelligence confirms the lance of pirate military units. It doesn't say battle max. It says military units. They're engaged in maneuvers on Bellerophon. Ba -ba -ba. This is a straightforward mission, Commander. Okay, let's go. We're loading the assets, I assume. And we can begin the mission. Command interface initiated. Okay, Darius. We got them, Commander, right out in the open. Uh, these guys are amateurs. Get eyes on them and take them out. Good hunting, Commander. All right. This whole planet could use an air conditioner. Oh, well. Glitch is a little bit mouthy. All right. So we got issues here with this battlefield that I don't like. Number one is rough terrain. Look at all this rough terrain. 
So when you're in rough terrain, it causes your mech to be unsteady, which means you can get knocked over easier. And that's no good. So I think that means... I guess we'll go this way. I guess we'll go this way. Go up into the forest so we get some tree cover. Just in case... Just in case they've set an ambush for us. So far, no deal. Alright, we're going to send uh, Behemoth in the Vindicator this way. Moving to position. Blackjack. Guess we'll go this way as well. Just to avoid all the rough terrain. And then Spider Boy. Look at how far he can move, man. He is crazy fast. So that's good. We'll sprint him up to the top of this hill and see what he can see. Look at him run, man. So speed and maneuverability is really what he's going to be all about. Okay. Glitch. Take uh -huh. your Shadowhawk up there. Uh-huh. Okay. It's fine. Um... I don't know what that symbol is. Badlands biomes. In the Badlands, heat sinks only 85% of their normal heat. Alright, so that's no good. Can't go over here. She's got jump jets, so she could jump over the rubble. It's always fun to do. I like using jump jets. They're very fun. They do cause... They do cost a lot of heat. But, you know, right now, heat's not a problem. Even though we're in the, the Badlands. So there we go. The Vindicator. Um, the, good, the other good thing about jumping is um, it only costs half your movement. So we can now do something else if we want to. We can't move again. But we can brace ourselves for impact. And then Medusa's a little slower, so we'll just plant him there. Spider-Man, where are you going to go? The enemy is up there, possibly. So let's go, let's go up on this little plateau and look around. Position confirmed. Position confirmed. Cloak in the spider. Our new red, white, and blue paint job looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. Still no sign of these dang pirates or whatever. How are your jump jets looking? You See, she's got only a couple of jump jets, so she can't go very far at all. It's almost not, use, it's almost not worth jump, jumping with Glitch or at least with this Shadowhawk. Unless you got to get over some rough terrain. Like, if I wanted to get over this rough terrain, it might be fine. But I think I'll just just walk up here get some high ground. We'll move Vindicator forward. And then we'll move everybody forward. Oh, there we go. We got our first contact. Okay, that's good. Cloak. What can Cloak do? Cloak has no special abilities. Your special abilities are here. These three dots here sometimes, or these three spaces here will get filled up with special abilities. But we do have some unit-wide special abilities. Precision Strike, which lets you target a specific point on a mech with a called shot. It gives you minus four to hit, but it can focus all your damage onto one spot. It costs 20 morale. And here's your morale meter over here. Our morale is at 50% right now, so that's fine. And then the other thing we can do is Vigilance. This gives your mech warrior guarded and entrenched. Whether you've entrenched or not, braced, I mean, whether you've braced or not, it'll give you both guarded and entrenched, which will make you harder to hit, improve your stability, and then on the next turn, your initiative will get increased. So right now, Cloak has the best initiative because he's in the smallest mech. means he moves faster, he's quicker, he moves first. But if one of these other mechs down here, like Vindicator, 
used this ability, the Vigilance ability, then they would move right now with Cloak. Because right now Cloak is moving in the number 4 slot. And these other mechs are moving in the number 3 initiative slot. There are 5 initiative slots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, 5 initiative slots. Doesn't really explain that very well here, but it's just... You know, something you get used to playing these sorts of games. So I'm going to move... I'm going to move Mr. Spitterman up here. Because we still got that ridge to protect us from the line of sight. So they might not know we're here yet. I think if we level... Whoa. Here comes the enemy. I think... Oh, they've got some mechs. Ooh, look out. I think if we level Cloak up one more level, there's a Locust coming into view. Uh-oh. Gonna take a shot at Cloak and Mist. I think if we level him up one more level, he'll get um, a scanning ability. Which will let him basically target any mech who's within scanner range. And what that lets him do is that lets him be our scout. So he could be hiding behind a mountain out of visual sight of the enemy but then he could target lock the enemy and then everybody else on our our team could attack them indirectly with missiles and stuff so that's a very handy skill to have all right so cloak is, is it's still his turn so he can still move so question is where do I want to move to I don't want this mech to come around the corner and blast me Again. So, you can see from the interface here, all the different icons that show up. Like here, I would still be in the trees because that tiny little tree icon right there. You can see that I'm in view of this guy, which is why we got the eyeball. And I'm in view of that guy. If I come out here, it'll show you the eyeball. It pops up. So, we're going to go over here. The red line means you have a direct line of sight if you come over here. So we're going to do that. So I'm coming out of the trees a little bit. But I've got my evasive bonus for moving. 240% shots. Not great. But there's no reason not to take these. Boom. Right arm destroyed. Right torso destroyed. It's two pretty good hits. I didn't expect that from just two medium lasers. But that shows you just how weak... The locust really is. I really hate putting any of my mech pilots into a locust because it's almost, it's almost certain death. All right, so now it's it's everybody else's turn. The number threes get to go. So we got uh, we choose them one at a time. I think we're gonna go with the Waiting vindicator. If I go over here, I can get two shots. You can see I go here. I got one direct line. To the locust but if I go here I get an indirect line to the mystery mech and I might be able to shoot some missiles at it we'll see I might not be able to target it because he's not in view of any of our mechs but nope now he's in view so what do they got here they have a Jenner so it's a slightly bigger version of the look actually it's considerably bigger than the locust but anyway it's it's similar to a locust just bigger so Oh, we don't have the multi-shot ability. So that's another one of the special abilities that your pilots can get. They can get the ability to shoot at more than one target. But for now, we're just going to shoot at this one target. We're going we're gonna to take off our LRM. No need to shoot at that. We've only got 50% shots. But we could probably kill this Locust if we hit. So I'm going to use the Precision Strike. That increases my hit chance to 70%. And now I can choose. I could go after the leg. I don't really want to go after the leg, even though the leg is the uh, most hittable part. I'm still going to go after the center torso. That would be a kill shot if we hit him there. It's only 9% chance, but Copy hey, that. we'll do it. And there it is. Center torso hit from the particle cannon, and he's roasted. Roasted. Get out of here. Alright. Good job. 
Now this reserve button is interesting. This is what you do like if there are no mechs in sight. You know the enemy's out there. They're close but you can't quite see them yet. You can put your guy in reserve and that will move them to the next position in line in terms of uh, initiative and who goes first. So that will let the enemy move first for one turn and then your guy will be available to go again. So it's a way for you to just hold off moving for one turn let the enemy come to you and then attack them back. So, you know, we could do that, but we don't uh, We don't need to do that. So we're going to move uh, Medusa now. Move up here, here. Let me see. What does a jump, what does a jump get me? A jump gets me into cover. And I can still have line of sight. So I will do that. Can move a little bit faster jumping than running. And the blackjack is in position now. Not, not very good. That it's a lot of heat, and not a lot of uh, chance to hit. So we're just gonna fire a couple of auto cannons, take our thirty percent chance to hit. Oh, crap. Yeah, crap. We didn't hit very well. So our pilots aren't very good right now. What but glitch, on the other hand, oh, glitch is stuck on this rock, so she's gonna need to jump down as well. Got a little bit of a flanking maneuver here. The Shadowhawk. This should be perfect range for the Shadowhawk. Auto cannons are long range guns. Long range missiles are of course long range weapons. Still only 47% or 40% to hit. Okay, so she has the skill of multi-target. So if there were two targets on the screen, she could attack two of them, but. We're just going to take our 40% chances to hit here and save our other weapons. Auto cannon miss, and we hit with one missile. Not great. So here comes the Jenner. Going to do some damage. Going to go after our spider, of course. Missiles missed us, but I think our leg is damaged. Yeah. So this is when you have to decide, like, what's Cloak going to do. He's got a bum leg. The rest of him is all right. You know, we should be able to finish this guy off this turn. So, you know, there's no reason not to. Now, the other thing I could do is I could run up and punch him. But punching in the spider doesn't do a lot of damage. The spider is very light. So his his melee damage only does 30. Whereas his two medium lasers, if they both hit, does 50. So there's no reason to do that. I think we'll just move up, get a little closer. Confirm. And blast him with two medium lasers. 55% chance to hit. Let's go. Targeting for an alpha strike. No. One hit. Structure exposed. So I destroyed his armor. And I got a critical hit. Destroyed one of his jump jets. So now we ought to be able to finish him off. Receiving you. The blackjack. Um. I really gotta. I gotta modify this blackjack. I don't like this setup. Four medium lasers. I guess I'll get up close. I don't necessarily need the auto cannon twos. I mean, they're long range, which is nice, but they don't do a lot of damage. And auto, I found auto cannon and medium lasers are not a great. They don't have a lot of synergy. You know, because look at that. Auto cannons are at 25% to hit at this range, but our medium lasers are at 60, 65% to hit. So they just, they don't complement each other very well in terms of ranges. Now they give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of having some long range ability and some medium range ability. But I prefer to have my mechs focus their damage at specific ranges. So that I know that one mech's a long range mech, one mech's a medium range mech or short range or whatever it is. So there we go. We got a couple of hits. Not enough. So yeah, I don't really like Waiting on you, Commander. mixing and matching. I prefer something like this where we've got, you know, long range, 
and long range. And those are our two main damage dealing weapons. So, we might as well precision strike, right? Increase our our percent to hit. Yeah, let's just go after the center torso. Let's go after a kill strike. Uh -huh. Pretty good damage. I got to I got to rework a lot of these mechs. They're just not uh, they're not doing it for me in terms of damage output. All right. So the vindicator, we'll just come up here and try to get the best shot we can. Location confirmed. Right now, Vindicator's got the big guns. Got the particle cannon. Got a medium laser. Again, not a great combination, but... Target confirmed. Particle cannon missed. That was our big gun. Oh, didn't matter. He was super weak. That's a kill. Killed him with the medium laser, so I take back what I said about medium lasers. Anyway, milk run, as we expected. Good job, Commander. Mission successful. There we go. So not a lot of problems there. Pretty easy mission. Uh, we had a little bit of damage to our spider. So there we go. We destroyed the pirate lance. We got our 138,000 uh, space bucks. You can see here damage was minimal. The spider is a little banged up, but not too bad. So it's a good little after action report. And now we get our choice of uh, loot. And what sort of loot do we want? We've got partial salvage on a Jenner and partial salvage on a Locust. I don't really like either of those. There's a long range missile, some medium lasers. Not a lot. Not a lot of interesting stuff to go around, honestly. Um, I think I'll take the Jenner salvage just because it's. It's the most valuable thing on the list. So we'll just take it. And then we're going to get a couple of other random pieces of loot out of this list. So let's see what we get. Oops, confirm. So there we go. We did get the locust carcass. Um, and then we got a medium laser and a jump jet. So that's fine. That's a good haul. It says our value is $2 million, But we'll never be able to sell this stuff for $2 million, So that value is way overpriced. Okay, okay, let's go. Gives you your little battle tech uh, theology up here. Various tips and information. So there we go. There's our first mission with Zebu's Marauders. We're on our way. We got over a million bucks now. So, you know, we're on our way towards paying off them loans and uh, making this a profitable enterprise. So we'll come back, we'll, um, I'll fix some mechs, I'll move some stuff around and do some things in the background. We still got 13 days till our other pilots are ready. We'll look for some more missions, and then we'll come back next episode when we have another mission. So, until then, until next time, we'll see you later, bye-bye. <laughs>